In the early hours, Private Kovko's family and his 3rd RAR battalion colleagues gathered at Melbourne Airport for the homecoming. But unbelievably, when the coffin arrived, it wasn't Private Kovko's body inside. The Defence Minister Brendan Nelson and Army Chief Peter Lay fronted the media to explain the extraordinary bungle. The Chief of Army received a phone call which had come uh, from uh, the Middle East and it was to inform us that uh, in fact uh, Private Jake Kovko body and casket uh, remained still in Kuwait. The Defence Minister says he was about to fly to sail to collect Private Kovko's widow when he got the news the wrong body had been sent. And they were angry and they dished it out to me and they dished it out to the Chief of Army and I don't blame them. In fact, Shelley Kovko demanded to speak to the Prime Minister and he was woken at 11 o'clock last night to take her call. And yes, she gave him an earful in a polite Australian way, but he got the message. We do not believe on the information available that the Army is to blame, uh, but uh, that's more comfort for her because uh, she's lost her husband and uh, now she's got to wait another potentially 48 hours to, to see his body. Just yesterday, Shelley Kovko spoke of her grief. It's, as I said, until I get him home, I don't know. Private Kovko's body left Iraq three days ago. His battalion honouring him as his flag-draped coffin was loaded onto a C-130 Hercules. The Defence Department says the mix-up occurred at a private mortuary in Kuwait. It's now dispatching a senior investigator and an independent pathologist to find out what went wrong. To see if we can have a very serious look at the way in which we bring our Australian Defence people home should they tragically uh, be killed whilst on deployment. Private Kovko died last Friday. Initial reports were that he had accidentally shot himself while cleaning his gun. But the Defence Minister now says that was not the case and the gun may have been knocked and then discharged accidentally. His body is now expected to arrive in Melbourne early Saturday. Kelly Wilson, ABC News.